This video is about the chi-square test for goodness of fit. All the other statistical tests in an undergraduate statistics course are about population parameters. Of course you know that parameters describe populations and consist of population mean, or mu, and population variance, or sigma. We call them parametric tests because they're about parameters. It's a very boring naming process going on. And those tests have assumptions, such as that the entire population of scores is normal in shape, or maybe homogeneity of variance has to be assumed. And these assumptions are about parameters too. These are parametric tests. We do research on samples in order to be able to say something about populations, which are entire groups of interest. If we didn't want to ever do that, we would not have to have this course. In most other statistical tests, other than the chi-square, we look at sample means and sample variance, and use those statistics to make inferences about population means. That little letter mu is pretty much always in the hypothesis some way. To get a mean, we have to be using equal interval or ratio scale data, basically numeric data that we can average and do math with. And those take up most of the undergraduate course in statistics. Most of your textbook is about parametric tests, so much so that we don't even tell you that they're called that, until we want to tell you about non-parametric tests, like this one. Is not all variables give scores that can be averaged. What if the variable is eye color? My score is brown. Your score might be green or blue or brown. We can't average scores like that. For nominal data, there's no mean for categorical scores. What we can do, though, is count them up. And when we do that, we have observe a frequency. We count up how many scores are in each category and we'll refer to those numbers as our observed frequencies. What are we going to do with those? We can think about what we'd expect to have observed. We always have an expectation of some kind. For example, I know that 10% of the human population is left-handed. Suppose I have 80 students. I'd expect 8 of them to be left-handed. The basis for my expected frequency of 8 is the known statistics about people in general, that there's 10% left-handed. So let's say I survey my 80 students, and I observe that 11 of them are left-handed, all right? 11 out of 80 I observe to be left-handed. You with me? Expected frequency is 8 left-handed. The basis for my expectation is known statistics for people in general. And my observed frequency is 11 left-handed. All right, how well does my observed frequency fit with my expected frequency? That's actually the question for significance. We're analyzing the degree to which an observed frequency fits with an expected frequency. The statistic we get is called the chi-square statistic, and it reflects how much the observed frequency does not fit with the expected frequency. The bigger that number, the more they don't fit with what we'd expect. With my left-handed people, I expected 8 to be left-handed. If I observed exactly 8 left-handed, my chi-square statistic would be 0, because I observed precisely what I'd expect. Of course, as you know, the world has chance factors and people are different, so just because 10% of the total human population is left-handed, that doesn't mean in every group of people precisely 10% are going to be left-handed, right? There's going to be variation that is completely accounted for by chance. It's regular. It's normal. Sometimes there's 9% left-handed in a group. Maybe another group has 12% left-handed. There's some variation that's always out there, which does not necessarily mean we have some significant difference. Every test we do gives us a statistic, right? We got a z-score, t-score, f-ratio, chi-square statistic. The bigger the statistic, the bigger the difference from what we'd expect if there's nothing going on. All right, let's look at the math on this left-handed situation. Very simple. Suppose I have a theory that left-handed students are more drawn to taking courses with me. I don't know. Let's just suppose I have this theory. And I know that 10% of the population in general is left-handed, so I should see about 10% of my students being left-handed. That's what I'd expect because 10% of the general population is left-handed. It would be weird to see literally 10% on the dot. So I need to conduct a statistical test to see how well my observed frequencies fit with the expected frequencies. And let's test at the 1% level. Sample size is 80. The expected percentage to be left-handed is 10%. So my expected frequency is 8, which is 80 times 10%, or 80 times 0 0.10. The basis for my expected frequency is known statistics of 10% left-handedness for people in general. And my observed frequency was 11. So these are all the numbers I have to start with. This is what I'm going to test. Let me remind you about the question we're asking with the chi-square test for goodness of fit. How well does the observed frequency fit with the expected frequency? Here's the math in that scary looking formula. 
So I'm going to fill in my observed frequencies and expected frequencies. You already have them. I'm just writing them down. Obviously, since I observed 80 students, my observed frequencies are going to total 80. And then here my expected frequencies are going to total 80 as well. This difference column, the third column, is going to add up to zero. Deviation scores always do that, because if we observed three more than expected for left-handed, obviously we observed three fewer than expected for right-handed. Whenever this is involved, we square the numbers before weighting them, weighting them, W-E-I-G-H-T. And so we're dividing by the expected frequency to weight each value. And we have the formula for the chi-square statistic, which just means to add up this column. And chi-square statistic here equals 1.26. And you normally write it with, in parentheses, the degrees of freedom and sample size. You'd follow that with uh, p-value and effect size if appropriate. So I need the critical value from the chi-square table. To use the table, I just need to know my desired significance level, or alpha, and the degrees of freedom. By the way, if you like to memorize things, degrees of freedom for this test is the number of categories minus one. There's two categories, left-handed and right-handed. So the degrees of freedom here is one. It should also make sense, though, because degrees of freedom is the number of scores free to vary. I have 80 students. I could have observed any number of them as left-handed. But once that's set, the rest of the 80 must be right-handed. That number's not free to vary. Only the first one is. That's what it means to say there's only one degree of freedom. Memorize it if you prefer, but this stuff can also actually make sense. All right, here's the table. Degrees of freedom is 1, 1% 1 significance level, chi-square, critical, 6.63. Our test statistic was 1.26 which is nowhere near this critical value, so this is not a significant test. Here's my properly worded conclusion. The observed frequency of left-handed people in my classes is no different than what I should expect based on known data about people in general. To summarize the process for the chi-square test for goodness of fit, you have observed frequencies over one nominal variable. You have some reason to expect frequencies for that variable. You're testing to see how well the observed frequencies fit with the expected frequencies. The chi-square statistic reflects how much the observed frequencies do not fit with what's expected. The bigger the statistic, the more the observed frequencies don't fit. If the statistic is bigger than the critical value from the table, then the test is significant. Reject the null hypothesis, which says there is no difference, because from that big statistic, it seems that there is. If the statistic is not bigger than the critical value, then whatever differences there are between what was observed and what was expected can be accounted for by chance. In this example, we had that. Even though I didn't have exactly 8 out of 80 students left-handed, the 11 out of 80 is not an unreasonable frequency under the umbrella that 10% of all people are left-handed. 11 out of 80, close enough. The next thing you should do is review and make sure you understand the basis for expected frequencies. For example, real quick, there can be a no preference test for goodness of fit, which carries an expectation that each category have the same number of scores in it. So review the logic of this statistical test and what significance represents. And the next test you'll learn is the other kind of chi-square test, and that builds on this one. So get this down before moving on, because this mini-video lecture on chi-square test for goodness of fit is done.